Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. This video is a basic tutorial of Smith chart. So this is the Smith chart. This is a very important thing. This is a very famous thing and I'm sure all the electronics people have seen this Smith chart at least once in their lifetime. So this Smith chart is used for finding out or figuring out the properties of transmission line graphically. Okay, so uh, in order to uh, find out the properties, we can go for a mathematical method or a graphical method. So if you can go for a graphical method, it is very much easier. So this makes your task easy. So Smith chart is actually a little bit complicated to uh, to see. It is a little bit complex. But uh, if you uh, try to study the Smith chart, it is very much simpler. So we'll try to uh, solve this problem that is making the Smith chart simpler. So this is a very basic tutorial of uh, Smith chart. This Smith chart is used for uh, identifying the properties like impedance, voltage, standing wave ratio, VSWR, reflection coefficient, etc. of the transmission line. So you can plot all these things in this graph. Okay. So uh, in this video, we are going to plot the impedance. So before going into that, uh, we'll uh, see how the transmission line actually looks like. Okay, so the transmission line is used for transmitting of electromagnetic waves. So that is the first thing and the basic thing you have to keep in mind. The line consists of a generator obviously in order to generate the electromagnetic wave. So the generator is having a impedance of uh, Z in. Say this is a generator which generates your wave. Now you are going to send the waves using the transmission line. I'm going to represent it as Tx. So this transmission line is having a line impedance, say it as Z0. Now you need a, a receiver, okay. So a generator will transmit the wave. There is a receiver, so this is a receiving side. This receiving side will receive the waves and it is having a load resistor and it is having a load impedance of Z load. Okay, so these uh, three things you have to keep in mind there is a generator there is a, uh, a receiver and there is a resistor which is a load resistor it is having a load impedance now what is the difference between resistance and impedance so we have uh, came across with these two terms right so resistance is something uh, which we consider that it is only having a real part but impedance is having a real part and imaginary part so if you uh, try to represent impedance as is it is it can be written as is it equal to R plus or minus J into X where this R is nothing but the resistance and this X is nothing but the reactance. So this reactance is the imaginary part and this real part which is the resistance. So you can write the impedance as impedance equal to R plus or minus Jx where R is the resistance part and X is the reactance part. So why uh, we are going for this much of details is that we can plot these two things in your Smith chart. Okay. So uh, let's try to do a simple problem of uh, plotting a uh, impedance. So before going into that, you need to do certain step. So the first step in which you are given your impedance. So the impedance is given. Now, you have to uh, consider what is your, so in the second step, you have to find your Z0 or line impedance. Okay, that is the second step. So first step, your impedance is given. So try to find out what is your Z0, which is your line impedance or the transmission line impedance. Okay, so first find out the transmission line impedance. So in the step three, normalize, normalize your, so from the impedance, you have your R plus or minus Jx, right? You have your resistance part and the reactance part. First, normalize the resistance or the R. That is normalizing is nothing but dividing R by Z0. Okay, so this you have to do in your third step. In the fourth step, you need to normalize the reactance part, which is your X. And it is also done by dividing it with Z0, which is nothing but your line impedance. So before plotting your impedance value into the Smith chart, you need to do these steps. We are going to plot the ZL, which is 100 plus or minus J100 ohm 
uh, into your Smith chart. That is, uh, we are going to plot the normalized load impedance. So first we need to uh, normalize the R part. So this is R plus or minus JX. So first you need to normalize the resistance part. So divide. So the R normalized equal to 100 by Z0 which is 100 again. That is equal to 1 po. Now find the reactance that is X normalized. Okay, so the reactance normalized is this 100 by 100. So here I have taken all the values as 100. So in real case, it will be different values. So what you need to do is you need to find the Z0 then divide both these parts with that Z0. Okay, so here it is again 1 ohm. So uh, when it is coming, the Z normalized will be obtained. So the Z normalized equal to 1 plus or minus 1 J O or J1. So this is your normalized uh, load impedance. Okay. So I will write Z load normalized. So Z load normalized is 1 plus or minus J1 O. Now we are going to plot uh, this normalized load impedance to your Smith chart. Now we are going to plot the value of 1 plus or minus 1 J that is the normalized uh, load impedance into our Smith chart. So this is our Smith chart. So first before plotting uh, I'll try to uh, I'll try to uh, say or um, explain what are the various areas in this graph. Okay so uh, if you see the very bottom of the graph you can see this is the center so this moves towards the load and this is towards the generated generator okay so this is the actually a xerox version of the graph this is not our original graph this is a xerox version so if you want to uh, ex uh, practice doing the smart chart it is to practice the uh, smart chart it is easily available there is a pdf version is easily available in net okay so um, so this is the center and this is towards load and this is generator now uh, these are uh, radially scaled parameters now if you see uh, here there is a one here and this is a center line you can say this as the real axis okay so this is the real axis and here it is written see resistance component so this is the real or the resistance line which is the real axis now where is the imaginary axis so here you can see there is a inductive reactance component. So this is nothing but the uh, reactance component. So this circle, if you see, this is the reactance component. And here, there is values on the upper uh, half of the circle and the lower half of the circle. So this values on the upper half of the circle uh, indicates the positive values and this indicates the that is in the bottom circle indicates the so here these values indicates the negative part or the negative uh, values of the imaginary imaginary axis or the reactance axis okay so now uh, we'll see how we can plot the values that is the load impedance values into the graph so we need to plot the value that is is it normalized load that is nothing but 1 plus or minus 1 j right so first we'll try to plot or try to figure out where is this value that is the uh, resistance value 1 like so we'll look in the uh, the resistance axis or the real axis that is this and here if you see there is a 1 okay so this point is our point of uh, resistance and we need to draw this entire circle to get our resistance value. So this entire circle indicates the so this one and here also. indicates ok 
you try to draw it neatly sorry i'm handling the camera and the pen so it is a little bit clumsy okay so here this circle indicates the one value of the resistance so this is your resistance now try to find out where is our this part that is the reactance part so here it is a positive value right so this is a plus 1g so it will lie on this half of the circle so where is our one so it is here so this this part of this circle or this arc of the circle indicates so this arc of the circle indicates the reactance part since it is a positive value it is lying in the upper half of the semicircle and if it is a negative value it will be in the lower half okay so the value is here so this is your value okay so this is your value of normalized so here so the crossing point that is this resistance value and this reactance value and the point at which it is crossing see this point where i have circled is the value of your normalized load impedance so this is your normalized load that is 1 plus or minus 1g okay so this is how you need to plot in your smith chart so for first you have to identify that this is your real part or the resistance part and this entire circle that is the first circle indicates your reactance part of the impedance so your impedance consists of the real part that is the resistance part and the reactance part so it is clearly written that this line indicates the see here it is written the resistance part this is the reactance part so uh, wherever it the both the circles that is this circle and this arc is crossing so this is your load impedance so this is how you can plot your normalized load impedance okay now we are going to do another example of plotting of load impedance to the smith chart so uh, the load impedance given is 40 minus j uh, 20 ohm and the it's at zero which is the line impedance is uh, 20 ohm so whenever it is uh, given ZL, you should identify that is the load impedance and ZL zero is always the uh, in standard case it is the line that is the transmission line impedance so we need to first normalize these two things that is the r normalized equal to 40 by 20 that is equal to 2 ohm now the reactants normalized equal to 20 by 20 that is minus 20 by 20 that is minus 1 ohm so the z load normalized so you can use another notation for representing this normalized either r dash etc okay so you can use r dash x dash and z dash so i have written it just to understand okay so the uh, load normalized is 2 minus 1 minus j1 o so this is the uh, normalized load impedance and this you have to plot in your smith chart now okay now we are going to draw the uh, next normalized impedance value onto us onto our smith chart i'm using this same smith chart which i've used earlier so here the uh, load value is there is a normalized load value is uh, nothing but 2 minus 1 g o okay so this is our value now in order to plot this uh, to the smith chart first you need to find where is the uh, the resistance component which is the plus 2 is lying so this is your resistance axis and the value 2 you can see it clearly it is lying here okay so this entire circle so you can see it here this entire circle indicates the 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 resistance part okay here also so this circle so I've used blue color so this is your resistance part 
now we will try to uh, find out where is the minus 1 g that is the reactance part so i have said earlier this is the negative part of your imaginary axis or your uh, reactance axis so we need to find out where is the minus 1 g so there is no negative sign given here you have to identify that this is the uh, negative part of the imaginary axis so here you can see a one here uh, clearly okay so this value is your reactance value and this entire arc indicates the negative one and this point is the crossing point here okay so this point indicates the normalized load so is that normalized that is the load normalized and the value is 2 minus 1 g o so this is the value so so we have plotted our uh, load normalized that is a normalized load impedance that is 2 minus 1 g okay so this is how you can plot your uh, load resistance or sorry the load impedance onto your smith chart that is a normalized load uh, impedance onto your smith chart so this is actually very simple so in this video we have identified where is the uh, resistance axis and the uh, where is the reactance of, of the transmission line or the impedance line so in this video we have identified how to load the normalized impedance onto the smith chart okay so this is a very basic tutorial of smith chart i hope you understood where is the resistance axis and the reactance axis lying in the smith chart there are various other uh, values or the uh, are the parameters here so there is wavelength towards load there is wavelength towards generator we will be explaining or we'll be doing uh, problems on these or how to plot these things in the upcoming videos i hope you uh, gained knowledge about this mid chart i hope you uh, got familiar with this chart a little bit try to be friendly with this chart. okay so uh, i hope you enjoyed watching the video if yes please do share this video with all your friends who is fearing smith chart or who is interested in studying smith chart and also with your family and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you